Welcome back. We have the general manager of Sun Rivers joining us this afternoon. Uh, Happy New Year's Eve, Happy to you, Rob. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. Eve, I guess you're New right. New Year's you're Eve. Right. Yeah. How are things going up at uh, at Hoodoo's and Sun Rivers? Uh, I know that you guys always have a lot of things going on. For yeah, the it's been, a, been been a busy November, December. Thankfully, mm -hmm. um, Chef's been obviously he usually comes on us on today, but uh, he's got New Year's Eve to prep for tonight, and as well as a wedding. So we've got a lot going on over there today. Somebody's getting married at Somebody's, midnight yeah, or what get, time? No, uh, earlier in the day. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little wedding going on as well as New Year's Eve. So he's a little busy today. Yes, yeah. I know a couple of different people who are married uh, on this day. It's a kind of a neat day to get married. It's I guess. pretty dangerous though if you've got an open bar on New Year's Eve. Oh yeah. It can be dangerous. It yeah. sure can because yeah. everybody's in the mood. Yeah. Uh, but today we have a table full of fun things that we're going to be talking about. Some wine that we're going to try. Uh, where do you want to start? Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stigmas out there that we're slowly breaking in, in everything. Um, it started out with these wonderful little uh, screw caps that you know wine was. Only bad wine was in screw caps. Mm -hmm. um, that's now changed with the Stelvin, and, and, and a lot of great wineries are now using you know, the screw cap as opposed to cork. Um, and it's taken that next evolution. I mean, we were just discussing it off camera that uh, it used to be where only entry level or cheaper wine was in uh, in boxes, um, whether it be Baby Duck or whatever it might be. Um, we associated with. Um, poor quality wines for boxes, and I was no different up, up until, oh, I'd probably say almost a year ago. Um, every time I saw someone pour a glass of wine out of a box, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. um, but with one of our wine reps came in, and, and we did a very similar to what we're doing today, and, and we did the math, and it allows us as a, as a restaurant to be able to give a great glass pour at an economical price. Right. Um, it also lasts a little longer um, for you for at home. Um, so if you do crack a bottle of wine, you know, it oxidizes fairly quickly. As mm -hmm. soon as you open it, it starts to deteriorate. Where in a, in a box program, it does not. So. And why is that? Just because it's air sealed, it's exactly. airtight, or? Yeah, there's no air getting in it at all. I mean, uh, once we crack these open, these will be good for six weeks. That's impressive. Um, not that a bottle, of, not that they would last in my house for six weeks, but <laughs> um, but that allows us to. I mean, even gastro pubs are now moving, uh, having wine coming out of kegs, um, just like beer. Um, and that's a great innovation that, to allow restaurants and wineries to be able to give a, a higher end glass pour that you may not sell as often without dumping water, great wine down the sink. So. I know. Nothing makes me sadder. Like this was happening yesterday. I went into my fridge and I was going to have a glass of wine with dinner and there was a bottle of Sumac Ridge and it had one glass out of it. I'd forgotten about it and it was vinegarized. Yeah, basically. it happens. It's disappointing. Yep. And you know, you either save it to cook in or yeah. uh, down the sink it goes. But yeah. um, so we've gone to a couple of uh, a box, bag and box programs here at Hoodoo's. And uh, what I've done here is I've poured one glass that's out of the box and one glass that's out of the bottle. Hmm. Um, so if you can tell the difference, um, I'd be, I, I couldn't tell the difference at all. But. Okay, so these are the. So we've got Perseus, it's a Cab Perseus? Shiraz. So a little heavier body. Uh, again, remember these are um, glass pours, mm -hmm. right? So they're not the, the top end, they're right in the middle. Um, and then we've also got a, a Chardonnay from, uh, from Mount Bougerie. So um, one of them, again, is out of the box, one's out of the bottle. Let's give it a try. Do you want to so try the whites are, first, or do you want to try the reds? Sure, let's try the reds first. But okay. these are both Perseus, one's bottle and one's box. Correct. And I don't know which. Same year, same vintage, Let's same everything. Just one's in a box and one's in a bottle. Now, hopefully I can remember which one's which. <laughs> and maybe I poured them both the same. You don't know. Because I've done that to people before, unfortunately, too. Bottle and box. Truthfully, it's the other way around. Shush. Yep. This tastes um, fresher somehow. It, not even fresher, but bolder. Just a little different. Come on. Yep, that this one came out box. of the box. I'm yeah. impressed. Yes, it did. Um, again, it's just getting over that stigma. Um, you know, again, you, you can get wine now in boxes, you can get them in caps, you can get them in tetra packs out of Australia. Tetra packs, like a drink pack? Yeah, well, not, no, like, not like, yeah, not the, yeah. you don't want to confuse that with the kitties no. at lunch, right? No, not good. Um, I said, you know, uh, maybe <laughs> call you into the office here to talk and discuss what you're giving your child for, for, for lunch. Why is little Jimmy sleeping but, on the playground? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And okay. then this is a Chardonnay. Okay. Um, again, one's in the box, one's in the bottle. I'm really impressed with this. It's different. Okay. Yep. It's, uh, and again, maybe they're both the same, maybe they're not. I know Chardonnay's not your favorite grape, but. This is quite good. It's a mild, it's right in between. Again, not too oaky, not too uh, um, fruity as well. I'm gonna say the same, bottle, box. It's the other way around. Really? Both of them on the right side were out of the box. Wow. And I'm not BSing. No, I know you're not BSing. <laughs> but you know, I, I don't know if I've ever bought a um, box wine, and if I have, it's been like university is when it would have been. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's just like everything else. You can find 
poor quality wines in box, mm -hmm. and you can find great quality wines in a box. Mm -hmm. Same in bottles. You can find um, bottles of wine that aren't very good, in your, in your opinion, um, or my opinion, um, but you can also find bottles of wine that are great. And there's bottles of wines that are corked that aren't very good, and bottles of wines that are, it's just sure. all relative, right? So, sure. um, I mean, yes, they're a little more expensive yeah. in the box, but they are cheaper than buying them by the bottle. And this is three liters. Is it yep. not? Three it's liters? Three liters. Yeah, yep. that's crazy. Yep. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention as well, as I was opening a bottle of champagne not long ago, it wasn't a cork cork popper. It was a plastic. Was it a bottle cap? No, no, it was a plastic cork. Oh, it must have been, was it the yellowtail? Yes. Yes, and it's got, the, you curl it off and it actually will reseal. Yes. Yes, of that's the one. Of course, I'm yeah. not resealing a bottle of champagne. No. It's, but in theory, it's a fabulous yeah, no, idea. Yeah, you could do that. Um, we brought Bella on last week or last time we did the sh when we did the show takeover, and it's mm -hmm. bottled with a bottle cap, just an old school bottle cap. Um, I mean, it's a little got a little more technology in the inside, mm -hmm. and you just pop it off with a like a beer cap. Awesome. And so uh, you just gotta watch it because uh, I mean, we cracked a bottle over uh, over the holidays, and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't quite we didn't quite finish it all. Or, sorry, I didn't quite finish it all. <laughs> um, so I actually resealed it with the bottle cap, uh -huh. left it in the fridge overnight, and the next day I went to pop it, and I just gave it a little flick, and it just blew across the room. So and still my going. Eight year old came running, Daddy, do it again, do it again, do it again. Um, but yeah, so you know, you gotta get rid of the stigma, mm -hmm. and, and it's all the important part. It's not what it comes in. It's what it tastes like in the glass. And I'm impressed. I'm telling you right now, I got both of these opposite, and uh, I would buy from the box anytime now. Yeah, and, and then if that. you happen to forget, it'll be fresh in the fridge if you hey, got a white wine. That's Absolutely. right. It's awesome. Um, I think we need also to take got a break. our. Hmm? Do you, do you want, do, we're going to take a break and come back. Absolutely, sounds great. We'll talk. We'll talk a little bit of beer. We still have Rob for one more segment. That's the good news. We will take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. We have Rob LaRock rejoining us here. We're going to be uh, trying some fun beers. Uh, you guys serve these all the time, don't you? You can actually come and try them? Or? Yeah, yeah that, this is what our beer flight looks like. Mm -hmm. and on, uh, we, our, we do it every day, but on Thursday nights we do flight night where Chef kicks up uh, an happy menu for $9.95 and we've got wine flights and beer flights and you can come try some local beer and some local wine and just have some fun and do your own little t sampling and tasting. So these are all locals? Uh, no, well, almost. Almost, some of them. They're all... They're on the planet. They're on the planet. They're on the That's planet. What That's local, That's what right? It's all relative. I get it. I totally uh, do. <laughs> I do have three from BC and yeah. one from uh, from Hawaii. Nice, Hawaii. So, really? Yeah. So what I've done, it, it, we're we're talking a little bit about our Pints and Plates Center, which is on January fifteenth. It's um, a wine pairing dinner, just like you would do with wine, or a beer pairing dinner, just like you would do with wine. It's our third annual. So, um, and it's four courses, four craft beers, four fun, and like we've always talked about, the four beers is just kind of a guideline for us. Mm -hmm. um, we've, the beer rep will be coming in from uh, that represents the three beers breweries that we're um, featuring, which is North Coast Brewery, uh, Elysian, and uh, Maui. Um, so I brought the last one here on our little blind flight is a coconut porter. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then I just brought some beers that I like. <laughs> and that's good. That's always good. Yeah, I'm typically not a beer drinker, but uh, you know, in in the name of research and uh, uh, learning a little more about craft beer, I've sort of become a, a craft beer guy now. Yeah. So. Uh, now, now become a coffee, beer, and wine snob, I guess. That's good. Those are so three welcome great Welcome to BC, I guess, right? That's what it is. Welcome to BC. And look at the nice colors of these, uh, all of them. Yeah, really so gorgeous. what we've got on the right-hand side is a, um, it's this beer here on the on the right. It's from Phillips. It's uh, on your right-hand side. My right here. This yeah, one's so right. camera left. Um, that is a, just a very simple, what they call session beer. Mm -hmm. um, and session beer just means sit down, get drunk kind of a beer. Mm -hmm. um, very light, very simple. I stumbled upon this uh, at one of the liquor stores as I was sampling some Phillips brew. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I really like it. It's just a very simple, you know, if you're more of a pedestrian, most of Canadian, Labatt blue drinker, and you want to get into craft beer, this is a real simple way to do it right here. Again, simple, a nice. little bit of backbone. Um, yeah. Not too, not, you know, people that have a tendency to associate craft beer with high hops and bitter and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But no, craft beer is everything from yeah. A to Z. So, yeah. And then the second one That's is, really uh, it's um, from Central City, from Red Racer. It's their Red Racer IPA. And again, we talked a little bit about um, the wine being in different, um, different um, volumes and different ways of serving wine mm -hmm. and packaging it. Again, so I brought two in the bottle and two in the can. Nice. Um, again, there are craft beer people out there that think that craft beer in a can is cheap and inexpensive and really? crappy. Really? I yeah. would never think that. Yeah, it's out there. 
Um, so I brought a good, good sampling. Maui does everything um, in their, their whole portfolio in cans. Um, they've got reasons it doesn't, doesn't um, shed light on it, doesn't go bad and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, so an Indian, Indian Pale Ale from Red Racer. A little more hoppy, a little more bitter. A um, little more in your That's face. Awesome, I love it. A little more flavor to it. Mm. Um, again, not one you might have, might have, might have, might not have six or twelve. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it's one you could have a couple. I find that with a lot of different craft beers, if they have a unique taste, you can have it maybe one or two, and then you're moving on. Moving on, yeah. Right. And that's why yeah. flights are great. Yes. Right? So you can get a good sampling, and if you pick Give one that really works well. That's right. So then we moved on to Phillips, um, their Kaleidoscope Mosaic IPA. Again, a little more, should be a little hoppier, a little more full-bodied. But again, if you look at the color difference, um, the, I'll show you what mine are here. Mm -hmm. The Indian Pale Ale from Red Race is just a little darker, mm -hmm. and then the Kaleidoscope's a little lighter. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to taste that way. So this is the darker one. So what, what, what really signifies that darkness being darker here on this um, one? The hops, the malt. Um, yeah. Just, you know what? That's just, I have no idea. That was just complete BS. I have no idea. No, no it idea. made sense to me. Let's try it. Exactly, Let's just try it. This is from Maui. No, this one's this not. This one's no. not. This next yeah, one. the last one is. Okay. Mm. Mm. A little more floral. A little more pineapple. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I thought Maui could smell it, but no. Yeah. No, that's got a little more pineapple in it. Not quite as bitter, but still has that IPA mm -hmm. bite to it. Mm -hmm. um, again, don't be scared. If you're a traditional beer drinker that loves Budweiser and you want to try some craft beers, I don't, I don't, I won't like it. I won't like it. Right. Just keep trying them because you will find one that you like. Okay. And this the, the Maui, I've never tried the Maui coconut porter. Uh, we had to bring it in a little bit early to make sure we had it for our beer dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be the finale of our beer dinner. Okay. Um, and again, I got the phone call uh, from our sales rep saying it comes in cans, and I was like, really, cans? Yeah. Again, that guy. Um, but he said, no, in my portfolio, he says, in his opinion, it's one of the best beers he's got in his portfolio. Interesting. So okay. Let's I've never sampled this at all, so. Coconut. You definitely smell chocolate. Mm-hmm. I taste the chocolate, I don't taste the coconut, and that's what it says on the can, but that's okay. End. Can you? Let me try it again. Yeah, just a little bit at the, at the back end. So it's not overly sweet. Yeah. Again, that was my quick, well, my fear with it was it was going to be overly sweet, but it's not with the coconut. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of an off, a little bit of a flavor. And mm -hmm. again, from Maui Brewery, mm -hmm. lots of great beers from all over coming into play now. And yeah. um, I guess I'm starting to learn more about it just because I've gotten into it with the, with the restaurant. We've got four rotating t kegs that we rotate every keg, and it's been, it's like Christmas. It's like, oh, are we done yet? Can we open up the next one? Right. Um, and we're looking forward to the beer dinner on January 15th and all kinds of fun stuff. Darren's cooking up a storm. We're pairing it all up. Again, same intricacies as wine and beer and pairing up food and flavors and contrasting and complimenting and all that kind of fun stuff. So yep. lots of exciting things going on at Sun Rivers, and we're hoping to have one of the uh, craft beers on the beverage cart for the golf course. How fun, fantastic. Th these are fun. These are flights th that are great. You can go and try a little bit of everything. Yep, I love it. Yep. And we don't pour them this short. They are full. No, yes, no, yeah. but for TV purposes. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for oh, being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much and yes. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to you as well. And we look forward to having you back on the show in 2015. We've really enjoyed our segment with you, Rob, and we look forward to Good. continuing Thanks on. Thanks very much. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe we'll do another to t uh, show takeover. We was will. Lots of fun. It was a lot of fun. Show takeover. We'll have to do that in 2015. Information on the screen if you want to check into this. Pints and Plates coming up in January. Lots of fun events, though. We're back in 90 seconds. Stay with us.